So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, graphing quadratics all types. And we're going to take a look at the examples and hopefully you read the first page of the PDF format. We have a table of values here, or an example of families of quadratic functions. And then for example A, a lot of you look at the function f of x is equal to 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. g of x is negative 5 x minus 3 times x plus 2. A lot of you know the answer to this. The form for this is clearly factored from right? It might not be so obvious. Yeah. And that's why some of you are noticing on your test, if you're trying to factor that answer, blah, blah, blah. And suspiciously, it might be the same, might be different. A lot of you know this is purely factor form. And the similarity is for this example only, a lot of you realize that you clearly have the same x same intercepts. And if they have the same x intercepts, in this case, I think a lot of you know from the example, a lot of you look at the sheet, right? The x intercepts are 3 and negative 2, right? 3 and negative 2. That means also they have the same uh, axis of symmetry. And again, what is axis symmetry? Although some of you might not see it on the screen, I think it is written there off the board. Axis symmetry is to add the two roots together and divide by two, right? That's why I get a lot of your emails trying to solve that. Obviously, it doesn't say about differences, but a lot of you realize the a value, in this case, is two. So, a volunteering class, what does that mean to you when the a value is two? Finish? Yeah, it's vertically compressed. No, he did it. He did it this way, so it's horizontally compressed. But in grade ten, we're gonna just go the same. Now it's vertically stretched by a factor of three. Vertically stretched. And how about this one? Negative five. Is this a value? Emma? Vertically stretched by a factor of five and reflected by. Beautifully said. Emma said vertically stretched by a factor of five and reflected, so it's an open band. So notice they're both gonna be narrow parabolas, but one's definitely gonna be narrow. One's actually even more skinny than the other one. But they have the same emphasis. And if some of you want to, again, go to Desmos online, some of you might want to sketch it out at, you know, negative 2 and at 3. Uh, one of them could be really, really narrow, and then one really narrow. It could be something like that, right? Negative 5. Question B, though, I think everyone agrees if you read it. M at x equals 10 times x minus 1 squared plus 4. Again, I'm just reading this off the sheet, ladies and gentlemen, in class and at home. And n and x equals negative 3 x minus 1 squared plus 4. A lot of you clearly realize that this is both vertex form. And again, one more time, might not be so obvious. If someone's giving you standard form and then you complete the square, oh, you realize that they have the same, this is the same family for this one because they have the same vertex. And again, a lot of you realize the same vertex here, and of course, obviously, it's the same thing, same axis of symmetry. It's the same vertex, which is 1 and 4 for both examples, m and x and n and x. But just like in our first example, example A, if you wanted to talk about the differences for question m and x, that is a vertical stretch by a factor of 10, and this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, but also reflected. So very similar to what Emma and Tanesh actually mentioned in class. Finally, for question C, let it realize, if you read the r at x and s at x functions, they both have the same C log, right? So this is clearly a standard form. And they have the same one. So. And again, I'm not going to sketch question B or C. A lot of you realize where they, these two problems are going to cross. Okay, so this is what we call about families. Something that's related, right? In this case, they have the same x intercepts. This is one of the same vertices. Right? Okay, maybe I'll just maybe I'll sketch it Maybe it's a little bit this, I'll just put it over here. So at negative, sorry, at 1 and 4. So maybe it looks something like that, and then something like this. That's from question B. For C, at uh, negative 1, uh, we honestly I don't know what the problem is, but it could look like that, or maybe it's like this. Everyone okay? Understanding? So notice the graphs actually reinforce it. So we're going to example two. This man's trolley and apologize, Owen. So example two, I just streamlined it, and I'll read it to you, the question for example two. It says determine the equation of the quadratic function in vertex form that passes through the 
I'm going to pass it through negative 320. If it's zeros, so let's change that. Pass it through. Negative 320, then what's the first part? And if it's zeros or roots or eccentricities, put 2 and negative 1. Use the information to show a diagram and determine the domain of it. So a lot of good things happening. So again, this seems very familiar. A lot of you actually know what you probably should do. Uh, I'll just walk us through it. I think since we're given the zeros, that's the zeros, out of the three types here, I think a lot of you realize factor form probably be a good approach. It's not the only way, but to lead a lot of states for success, a lot of will do that. And so let's just write that out. F of x is equal to a times x minus 2 x plus 1. Before we continue, what do we have now notice it's factor form, and they want the answer, for example, to in vertex form. So we'll have to do some massaging, but I think we can do it. And there's many ways of doing it. I think a lot of you realize there's too many variables here. We have the y value, or the f of x, we have an a and an x here. But a lot of you realize using this information, if this negative 320 lies on this parabola, and negative 3 is the x value, and 20 is the y value, we can put 20 there. A uh, three negative three here, negative three here. And a lot of you might remember this from grade 10. These questions technically, when they were given to you, it really is says solve for A. And that's why it's really asking you to solve for the vertical stretch in a question. Even though it didn't say it in this question, right? So that's the lead up for what we have to try to do for this question. Before we continue, any questions from class? What I just did? I'm not understanding where I got the negative 3 and the 1. So, this is what's called an algebraic approach as well. So, we got 20 is equal to Any questions at home? Can't answer because if you're watching this on YouTube. So a lot of people might say, let's expand this, right? And then complete the square. Well, honestly, if we have the zeros, it's actually a little easier to do something that you've done doing in your time. It's just slightly over. Sorry, over. Is that blocking? No, thank you. So I think a lot of you know what I'm going to do. And that's why we already have it written here. If we have the roots, we can find the axis symmetry because the axis symmetry will give us the x coordinate of the vertex. So, really quickly, A of S. And I think the zeros are 2 plus, oops, that's good. 2 plus negative 1. It's an average, right? It's like the midpoint. And so I think it gets 1 half. So that is the x coordinate of the vertex. And then what are you going to do with this? Well, sub x equals a half into this equation. So the factor equation. Now you don't have to write this out. I'm just trying to teach you, ladies and gentlemen. Not seeing if just write this out, sub x equals a half. But I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing before we continue on. Okay. So y is equal to 2. This time we have the half. Can someone in the class actually help me out? Feel free to use the calculator, you don't feel bad. Anyways, you get an answer for that. So you do the horizontal the operations first. You're basically evaluating, right? 2 times a half minus 2, and then half plus 1. No pressure. Think about it. Any ball for actually do that? Did I? Yeah, negative four point five or nine half, right? Negative nine half. I like fractions, so no, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> You're absolutely. I could definitely, you could have definitely done it with zero point five, right? Yeah, I know. See, I did this on this. I would have definitely probably made it nicer numbers, but it is what it is, right? So, to answer the question for this one, I think let me know. 
Notice the A's still the same, the same right? Because it's the same family, so that's the two. And I think we're going to use that half, so x minus a half squared minus nine halves. Or we use the initials of uh, decimals. This is also fine if you wrote this out. And it would say on the test which one would we prefer. Let's just see that video. Got that there. <laughs> I thought that was a little bit. Any questions about this example two? There we go. And I think it's actually easier this way. This is easier. Like, I think a lot of you this in your test. If you have the roots or the zeros, like this, just have to find the average, gives us the x bar and the vertex, and then you plug it in. And again, I actually am just mirroring the PowerPoint just now for one out. Stop recording for a second.